Section 3. Everyday Life, Culture and Politics. Chapter 5. Print Culture and the Modern World. It is difficult for us to imagine a world without printed matter. We find evidence of print everywhere around us in books, journals, newspapers, prints of famous paintings and also in everyday things like theater programs, official circulars, calendar, diaries, advertisements, cinema, poster at street corner. We read printed literature, see printed images, follow the news through newspaper, and track public debates that appear in print. We take for granted this world of print and often forget that there was a time before print. We may not realize that print itself has a history which has in fact shaped our contemporary world what is the history when did printed literature begin to circulate how has it helped create the modern world in this chapter we will look at the development of print from its beginning in east asia to its expansion in europe and in india we will understand the impact of the spread of technology and consider how social lives and cultures changed with the coming of print. Figure bookmaking before the age of print from Aklak e Nasiri, 1595. This is a royal workshop in the 16th century, much before printing began in India. You can see the text being dictated, written and illustrated. The art of writing and illustrating by hand was important in the age before print. Think about what happened to these forms of art with the coming of printing machines. One. The first printed books. The earliest kind of print technology was developed in China, Japan, and Korea. This was a system of hand printing from AD 594 onwards. Books in China were printed by rubbing paper, also invented there, against the inked surface of wood blocks, as both sides of the thin, porous set could not be printed. The traditional Chinese accordion book was folded and stitched at the site. Superbly skilled craftsmen could duplicate with remarkable accuracy. The beauty of calligraphy. New words, calligraphy. The art of beautiful and stylist writing. The imperial state in China was for a very long time the major producers of printed material, China possessed a huge bureaucratic system which recruited its personnel through civil service examination. Textbooks for this examination were printed in vast numbers under the sponsorship of the imperial state. From the 16th century, the number of examination candidates went up and that increased the volume of print by the 17th century as urban culture bloomed in China. The uses of print diversified. Print was no longer than just by scholar officials. Merchants used print in their everyday life as they collected trade information. Reading increasingly became a leisure activity. The new readership preferred fictional narratives, poetry, autobiographies, 
anthologies of literary masterpieces and romantic plays. Rich women began to read and many women began publishing their poetry and plays. Wives of scholar officials published their works and Cartesians wrote about their lives. This new reading culture was accompanied by a new technology. Western painting techniques and mechanical presses were important. In the late 19th century, as Western powers established their outpost in China, Shanghai became the hub of the new print culture. Catering to the Western style school from hand printing, there was now a gradual shift to mechanical printing. Print in Japan. Figure two a, a page from the Diamond Sutra. Buddhist missionaries from China introduced hand printing technology into Japan around AD 768 to 770. The oldest Japanese book printed in AD 868 is the Buddhist Diamond Sutra containing six sets of text and woodcard illustrations. Pictures were printed on textiles. Playing cards and paper money. In medieval China, poets and prose writers were regularly published and books were cheap and abundant. Figure to be Tripitaka Koreana. Belonging to the mid 13th century printing wood blocks of the Tripitaka Koreana are a Korean collection of Buddhist scriptures. They were engraved on about 80,000 wood blocks. They were inscribed on the UNESCO memory of the World Register in 2007. Source http://www.cha.go.kr. Printing of visual materials led to interesting publishing practices in the late 18th century. In the flourishing urban circles at Edo, later to be known as Tokyo, illustrated collections of paintings depicted an elegant urban culture involving artists, courtesans, and tea house gatherings. Libraries and bookstores were packed with hand printed materials of various types books on omen, musical instrument, calculations, tea ceremony, flower arrangement, proper antiquity, cooking, and famous places. Box 1. Kitagawa Utamaro, born in Edo in 1753, was widely known for his contribution to an art form called Ukyo, pictures of the floating world, or depiction of ordinary human experiences, especially urban ones. The prints traveled to contemporary US and Europe and influenced artists like Manet, Monet, and Van Gogh. Publishers like Sutaya Suzaburo identified subject and commissioned artists who drew the theme in outline. Then a scaled woodblock carver pastured the drawing on a woodblock and carved a printing block to reproduce the painter's lines. In the process, the original drawing would be destroyed and only prints would survive. Figure an ukiyo print by Kitagawa Utamaro. Figure 4. A morning scene ukiyo print by Sunman Kubo, late 18th century. A man looks out of the window at the snowfall while women prepare tea and perform other domestic duties. Print comes to Europe 
New words, vellum, a parchment made from the skin of animals. For centuries, skills, silk and spices from China flowed into Europe through the silk route. In the 11th century, Chinese paper raised to Europe via the same route. Paper made possible the production of manuscripts carefully written by scribes. Then in 1295, Marco Polo, a great explorer, returned to Italy after many years of exploration in China. As you read a verb, China already had the technology of woodblock printing. Marco Polo brought this knowledge back with him. Now Italians began producing books with woodblocks and soon the technology spread to other parts of Europe. Luxury editions were still handwritten on very expensive vellum meant for aristocratic circles and rich monastic libraries which scoffed at printed books as cheap vulgarities. Merchants and students in the university towns bought the cheaper printed copies. Figure Zigzi. The Zigzi of Korea is among the world's oldest existing book printed with movable metal type. It contains the essential feature of Zen Buddhism. About 150 monks of India, China, and Korea are mentioned in this book. It was printed in late 14th century. While the first volume of the book is unavailable, the second one is available in the National Library of France. This work marked at an important technical change in the print culture. That is why it was inscribed on the UNESCO memory of the World Register in 2001. As, a, as the demand for books increased, booksellers all over Europe began exploring books to many different countries. Book fairs were held at different places. Production of handwritten manuscript was also organized in new ways to meet the expanded demand. Scribed or skilled handwriters were no longer solely employed by wealthy or influential patrons but increasingly by booksellers as well. More than 50 scribes often worked for one bookseller. But the production of handwritten manuscripts could not satisfy the ever-increasing demand for books. Copying was an expensive, laborious, and time-consuming business. Manuscripts were fragile, occurred to handle, and could not be carried around or read easily. Their circulation therefore remained it, limited, with the growing demand for book, wood block, printing gradually became more and more popular. By the early 15th century, wood blocks were being widely used in Europe to print textiles, playing cards, and religious pictures with simple brief text. There was clearly a great need for even quicker and cheaper reproduction of text. This could only be with the invention of a new print technology. The breakthrough occurred at Strasbourg, Germany, where Johann Gutenberg developed the first known printing press in the 1430s activity. Imagine that you are Marco Polo. Write a letter from China to describe the world of print which you have seen there. Comment this. Gutenberg and the printing press. Figure a portrait of Johann Gutenberg, 1584. Gutenberg was the son of a merchant and grew up on a large agricultural estate. From his childhood, he had seen wine and olive presses. Subsequently, he learned the art of polishing stones, became a master goldsmith, and also acquired the expertise to create lead molds used for making trinkets, drawing on this knowledge. 
Gutenberg adapted existing technology to design his innovation. The Oli press provided the model for the printing press and molds were used for casting the metal types for the letter of the alphabet. By 1448, Gutenberg perfected the system. The first book he printed was the Bible. About 180 copies were printed and it took three years to produce them. By the standards of the time, this was fast production. The new technology did not entirely displace the existing art of producing books by hand. In fact, printed books at first closely resembled the written manuscripts in appearance and layout. The metal letters imitated the ornamental handwritten styles. Borders were illuminated by hand with foliage and other patterns. And illustrations were painted in the books printed for the rich. A space for decoration was kept blank on the printer page. Each purchaser could choose the design and decide on the painting school that would do the illustration. In the hundred years between 1450 and 1550, printing presses were set up in most countries of Europe. Printers from Germany traveled to other countries seeking work and helping start new presses. As the number of printing presses grew, book production boomed. The second half of the 15th century saw 20 million copies of printed books flooding the markets in Europe. The number went up in the 16th century to about 200 million copies. They shipped from hand printing to mechanical printing led to the print revolution. Figure Gutenberg Printing Press. Notice the long handle attached to the screw. This handle was used to turn the screw and press down the platen over the printing block that was placed on top of a sheet of damp paper. Gutenberg developed metal types for each of the 26 characters of the Roman alphabet and devised a way of moving them around so as to compose different words of the text. This came to be known as the movable type printing machine and it remained the basic print technology. Over the next 300 years, books could now be produced much faster than was possible when each print block was prepared by carving a piece of wood by hand. The Gutenberg press could print 250 sheets on one site per hour. Frame, the screw, handle, platen, printing block placed over paper. New words, platen. In letterpress printing, Platen is a board which is pressed onto the back of the paper to get the impression from the type. At one time it used to be a wooden board, later it was made of steel. Figure Pages of Gutenberg's Bible, the first printed book in Europe. Gutenberg printed about 180 copies of which no more than 50 have survived. Look at these pages of Gutenberg's Bible carefully. They were not just products of new technology. The text was printed in the new Gutenberg press with metal type. But the borders were carefully designed, painted and illuminated by hand by artist. No two copies were the same. Every page of each copy was different. Even when two copies look similar, a careful comparison will reveal differences. Elites everywhere preferred this lack of uniformity, what they process then could be claimed as unique, for 
no one else owned a copy that was exactly the same. In the text you will notice the use of color within the letters in various places. This had two functions. It added color to the page and highlighted all the holy words. To emphasize their significance. But the color on every page of the text was added by hand. Gutenberg printed the text in black, leaving spaces where the color could be filled in later. Figure A printer's workshop, 16th century. This picture depicts what a printer's shop looked like in the 16th century. All the activities are going on under one roof. In the foreground on the right, compositors are at work, while on the left, galley are being prepared and ink is being applied on the metal types. In the backgrounds, the printers are turning the screws of the press and near them, proofreaders are at work. Right in front is the final product, the double page printed sheets stacked in neat piles, waiting to be bound. New words, compositor, the person who composes the text for printing. Galley, metal frame in which types are laid and the text composed. Three, the print revolution and its impact. What was the print revolution? It was not just a development, a new way of producing books. It transformed the lives of people, changing their relationship to information and knowledge and with institutions and authorities. It influenced popular perceptions and opened up new ways of looking at things. Let us explore some of these changes. A new reading public activity. You are a bookseller advertising the availability of new cheap printed books. Design a poster for your shop window. Comment this. With the printing press, a new reading public emerged. Printing reduced the cost of books. The time and labor required to produce each book came down and multiple copies could be produced with great ease. Books flooded the market, reaching out to an ever-growing readership. Access to book created a new culture of reading. Earlier, reading was restricted to the cities, to the elites. Common people lived in a world of oral culture. They heard sacred texts read out, ballads recited, and folk tales narrated. Knowledge was transferred orally. People collectively heard a story or show a performance. As you will see in chapter 8, they did not read a book individually and silently. Before the age of print, books were not only expensive, but they could not be produced in sufficient numbers. Now books could reach out to wider sections of people. If earlier there was a hearing public, now a reading public came into being. But the transition was not so simple. Books could be read only by the literature and the rates of literacy in most European countries were very low till the 20th century. How then could publishers persuade the common people to welcome the printed book? To do this, they had to keep in mind the wider reach of the printed work. Even those who did not read could certainly enjoy listening to books being read out. So, printers began publishing popular ballads and folk tales, and such books would be profusely illustrated with pictures. These were then sung and recited at gatherings in villages and in taverns in towns. Oral culture thus entered print and printed material was orally transmitted. The line that separated the oral and reading cultures became blurred. 
and the hearing public and reading public became intermingled. New words, ballad, a historical account or folk tale in words, is what is sung or recited. Taverns, places where people gather to drink alcohol, to be served food, and to meet friends and exchange news. Religious debates and the fear of print. Print created the possibility of wide circulation of ideas and introduced a new world of debate and discussion. Even those who disagreed with established authorities could now print and circulate their ideas through the printed message. They could pursue people to think differently and move them to action. This had significance in different spheres of life. Not everyone welcomed the printed book and those who did also had fears about it. Many were apprehensive of the effects that the easier access to the printed word and wider circulation of books could have on people's mind. It was feared that if there was no control over what was printed and read then rebellious and irreligious thoughts might spread if that happened, the authority of valuable literature would be destroyed, expressed by religious authorities and monarchs, as well as many writers and artists. This anxiety was the basis of widespread criticisms of the new printed literature that had begun to circulate. Figure J. B. Scali, L. M. Primary. 1790-1739. This is one of the many images produced in early modern Europe celebrating the coming of print. You can see the printing press descending from heaven, carried by a goddess on two sides of the goddess. Blessing the machines are Minerva, the goddess of wisdom, and Mercury, the messenger god, also symbolizing reason. The women in the foreground are holding plaques with a portrait of six pioneer printers of different countries. In the middle ground on the left figure encircled is a portrait of Gutenberg. Let us consider the implication of this in one sphere of life in early modern Europe, namely religion. In 1517, the religious reformer Martin Luther wrote 95 theses criticizing many of the practices and rituals of the Roman Catholic Church. A printed copy of this was posted on a church door in Wittenberg. It challenged the church to debate his ideas. Luther's writing was immediately reproduced in vast numbers and read widely. This led to a division within the church and the beginning of the Protestant Reformation. Luther's translation of the New Testament sold 5,000 copies within a few weeks and a second edition appeared within three months. Deeply grateful to print, Luther said, Printing is the ultimate gift of God and the greatest one. Several scholars, in fact, think that print brought about a new intellectual atmosphere and helped spread the new ideas that led to the Reformation. 
New Words, Protestant Reformation, a 16th century movement to reform the Catholic Church, dominated by Rome. Martin Luther was one of the main Protestant reformers. Several traditions of anti-Catholic Christianity developed out of the movement. Print and Descent New Words Inquisitions A former Roman Catholic court for identifying and punishing heretics Heretical Beliefs which do not follow the accepted teaching of the church in medieval times Heresy was seen as a threat to the right of the church to decide on what should be believed and what should not Heretical beliefs were severely punished. Statuity The state of building fulfilled must be in the point of satisfaction. Seditious Action, speech or writing that is seen as opposing the government. Print and popular religious literature stimulated many distinctive individual interpretations of faith even among little educated working people in the 16th century. Menocchio, a miller in Italy, began to read books that were available in his locality. He reinterpreted the message of the Bible and formulated Bible and formulated a view of God and creation that enraged the Roman Catholic Church. When the Roman Church began its inquisitions to repress heretical ideas, Menocchio was howled up twice and ultimately executed. The Roman Church, troubled by such effects of popular reading and questioning of faith, imposed severe controls over publishers and booksellers and began to maintain an index of prohibited books from 1558. Figure A Macabre Dance This 16th century print shows how the fear of printing was dramatized in visual representations of this time. In this highly interesting woodcard, the coming of print is associated with the end of the world. The interior of the printer's workshop here is the site of Dance of Death. Skeletal figures control the printer and his workers, define and dictate what is to be done and what is to be produced. Source: Fear of the Book Erasmus, a Latin scholar, a Catholic reformer, who criticized the ex excesses of Catho Catholicism but kept his distance from Luther, expressed a deep anxiety about printing. He wrote in Adagus, 15.8. To what corner of the world do they not fly? Then these swarms of new books, it may be that one here and there contributes something worth knowing, but the very multitude of them, multitude of them is hurtful to scholarships because it creates a guilt, and even in good good things, statity is most harmful. Printers fill the world with books, not just dropping, tripling things such as one right perhaps but stupid ignorant slanderous scandalous rabbing irreligious and stereotypous books and the number of them is such that even the valuable publishers publications lose their value discuss do this and comment this Four, the reading mania. 
Through the 17th and 18th centuries, literacy rates went up in most parts of Europe. Churches of different denominations set up schools in villages, carrying literacy to peasants and artisans. By the end of 18th century, in some part of Europe, literacy rates were as high as 60 to 80 percent. As literacy and schools spread in European countries, there was a virtual reading mania. People wanted books to read and printers produced books in ever increasing numbers. New words, denomination, subgroup within a religion, religion. Almanac, an annual publication giving atmospheric astronomical data, information about the movements of sun and moon, timing of full tides and eclipses, and much each else that was of importance in the everyday life in people. Chap book, a term used to describe pocket size books that are sold by traveling. Sold by traveling peddlers called Chapmen. This became popular from the time of the 16th century print revolution. New forms of popular literature appeared in print, targeting new audiences. Booksellers employed peddlers who roamed around villages, carrying little books for sale. There were admankas or ritual children along with ballads and folk tales. But other forms of reading mattered largely for entertainment began to reach ordinary readers as well. In England, penny chapbooks were carried by petty peddlers known as Chapman and sold for a penny, so that even the poor could buy them in France, where the Bileothic Bleu, which were low-priced blue covers. Then there was the romances printed one, four to six pages, and the more substantial histories, which were stories about the past. The books were of various sizes, serving many different purposes and interests. The periodical press developed from the early 18th century combining information about current affairs with environment. Newspapers and journals carried in information about wars and trade as well as news of developments in other places. Similarly, the ideas of scientists and philosophers now became more accessible to the common people. Ancient and medieval scientific texts were compiled and published and maps and scientific diagrams were widely printed. When scientists like Isaac Newton began to publish their discoveries, they could influence a much wider circle of scientifically minded readers. The writings of thinkers such as Thomas Paine, Voltaire, and Jean Jacques Rousseau were also widely printed and read. Thus, their ideas about science, reason, and rationality found their way into popular literature. Box 2. In 1791, the London publisher James Lackington wrote in his diary, The sale of books in general has increased prodigiously within the last 20 years. The poor are short of farmers and even the poor country people in general who before that prior spent their winter evenings in relating stories of witches, ghosts, hobgoblins, now shorten the winter night by hearing their sons and daughters read the them tales, romances, etc. If John goes to town with a load of hay, he is charged to be sure not to forget to bring home Peregrine Peckel's adventure and when Dolly is sent to sell her eggs, she is commissioned to purchase the history of Joseph Andrews. Trimble, therefore, tyrants of the world. By the mid 18th century, 
there was a common conviction that books were a means of spreading progress and enlightenment. Many believed that books could change the world, liberate society from despotism and tyranny, and herald a time when reason and intellect would rule. Louis Sebastian Mercier, a novelist in 18th century France, declared the printing press is the most powerful engine of progress and public opinion is the force that will shoot despotism away. In many of Mercier's novels, the heroes are transformed by acts of reading, they devour books and are lost in the world books, create and become enlightenment in the process. Convinced of the power of print in bringing enlightenment and destroying the basis of despotism, Marcial proclaimed, Tremble therefore tyrants of the world, tremble before the virtual writers. Source B. This is how Marcia described the impact of the printed world and the power of reading in one of his books. Anyone? who had seen me reading would have compared me to a man dying of thirst who was gulping down some fresh pure water, lighting my lamp with extraordinary cautions. I threw myself hungrily into the reading. An easy eloquence, effortless and animated carried me from one page to the next without my noticing it, a clock stuck off the hours in the silence of the shadow, and I heard nothing. My lamp began to run out of oil and produced only a pale light. But still I read on. I could not even take out time to raise the wick for fear of interrupting my pleasure. How those new ideas rushed into my brain, how my intelligence adopted them. Quoted by Robert Danton, the forbidden bestsellers of pre-revolutionary France, 1995. Print culture and the French Revolution Many historians have argued that print culture created the conditions within which French Revolution occurred. Can we make such a connection? Three types of arguments have been usually put forward. New words, despotism, a system of governance in which absolute power is exercised by an individual, unregulated by legal and constitutional checks. First, Print popularized the ideas of the Enlightenment thinkers. Collectively, their writings provided a critical commentary on trading, tradition, superstition, and despotism. They argued for the rule of reason rather than custom and demanded that everything be judged through the application of reason and rationality. They attacked the sacred authority of the church and the despotic power of the statue thus eroding the legitimacy of a social order based on tradition. The writings of Voltaire and Rousseau were read widely, and those who read these books saw the world through new eyes, eyes that were questioning, critical and rational. Second, Print created a new culture of dialogue and debate. All values, norms, and institutions were re-evaluated and discussed by a public that had become aware of the power of reason and recognized the need to question existing ideas and beliefs. Within this public culture, new ideas of social revolutions came into being. Third. By the 1780s, there was an outpouring of literature that mocked the royalty and criticized their morality. In the process, it raised questions about the existing social order, cartoons and Caricatures typically suggested that the monarchy remained absorbed only in sensual pleasures while the common people suffered immense hardship. This literature circulated underground and led to the growth of hostile sentiments against the monarchy. 
how do we look at the at these arguments there can be no doubt that print helps the spread of ideas but we must remember that people did not read just one kind of one kind of literature if they read the ideas of voltaire and rousseau they were also exposed to monarchical and charge propaganda they were not influenced directly by everything they read or saw they accepted some ideas and rejected others they interpreted things their own way print did not directly shape their minds but it did open up the possibility of thinking differently activity imagine that you are a cartoonist in france before the revolution design a cartoon as it would have appeared in a pamphlet comment this and draw it figure the nobility and the common people before the french revolution a cartoon of the late 18th century the cartoon shows how the ordinary people peasants artisans and workers had a hard time while the nobility enjoyed life and oppressed them circulation of cartoons like this one had an impact on the thinking of people before the revolution discuss why do some historians think that print culture created the basis for the french revolution comment this five the 19th century The 19th century saw fast leaps in mass literacy in Europe, bringing in large numbers of new readers among children, women, and workers. Children, women, and workers. As primarily education became compulsory from the late 19th century, children became an important category of readers. Production of school textbooks. become critical for the publishing industry a children's press devoted to literature for children alone was set up in france in 1857 this press published new works as well as old fairy tales and folk tales the grim brothers in germany spent years compiling traditional folk tales gathered from peasants what they collected was edited before the stories were published in a collection in 1812 anything that was considered unsuitable for children or would appear vulgar to the elites was not included in the published version rural folk tales thus acquired a new form in this way print recorded old tales but also changed them F- figure Frontier's piece of Penny Magazine. Penny Magazine was published between 1832 and 1835 in England by the Society of the Diffusion of Useful Knowledge. It was aimed primarily at the working class. Frontier's piece for the Penny Magazine of the Society for the Diffusion of Useful Knowledge, Volume One. women became important as readers as well as writers penny magazines see figure were especially meant for women as were manuals teaching proper behavior and housekeeping when novels began to be written in the 19th century women were seen as important readers some of the best known novelists were women jenny austen and bronte sister George Eliot the writing became important in defining a new type of woman a person with will a strength of personality determination and power to think lending libraries had been in existence from the 17th century onwards in the 19th century lending libraries in england became instrument for educating white collar workers artisans and lower middle class people 
Sometimes self-educated working class people wrote for themselves. After the working day was gradually shortened from the mid 19th century, workers had some time for self-improvement and self-expression. They wrote political tracts and autobiographies in large numbers. Box. Thomas Wood, a Yorkshire mechanic, narrated how he would rent old newspapers and read them by firelight in the evening as he could not afford candles. Autobiographies of poor people narrated their struggles to read against the grim obstacle. The 20th century Russian revolutionary author Maxim Gorky's My Child and My University provide glimpses of such struggles. Further innovation. By the late 18th century, the press came to be made out of metal. Through the 19th century, there were a series of further innovation in printing technology. By the mid 19th century, Richard M. Ho of New York had perfected the power driven cylindrical press. This was capable of printing 8,000 sheets per hour. This press was particularly useful for printing newspapers. In the late 19th century, the offset press was developed which could print up to six colors at a time. From the turn of the 20th century, electrically operated presses accelerated printing operations. A series of other developments have followed. Methods of feeding paper improved. The quality of plates became better. Automatic paper rails and photoelectric controls of the color register were introduced. The accumulation of several individual mechanical improvements transformed the appearance of printed text. Printers and publishers continuously developed new strategies to sell their product. 19th century Periodicals realized important novels which gave birth to a particular way of writing novels. In the 1920s in England, popular works were sold in cheap series called the shilling series. The dust cover or the book jacket is also a 20th century innovation. With the onset of the Great Depression in the 1930s, publishers feared a decline in book purchases to sustain buying they brought out cheap paperback editions. Activity Look at figure. What impact do such advertisements have on the public mind? Do you think everyone reacts to printed materials in the same way? Comment this. Figure Advertisement at a railway station in England a lithograph by Alfred Conkanen, 1874. Printed advertisements and notices were plastered on street walls, railway platforms, and public buildings. India and the world of print. Let us see when printing began in India and how ideas and information were written before the age of print. Manuscripts before the age of print. India had a very rich and old tradition of handwritten manuscripts in Sanskrit, Arabic, Persian, as well as in various vernacular languages. Manuscripts were copied on palm leaves or on handmade paper. Pages were sometimes beautifully illustrated. They would be either placed between wooden covers or sewn together to ensure preservation. Manuscript continued to be produced till well after the introduction of print down to the late 19th century. Figure pages from the Gita Gabinda of Jayadeva, 18th century. This is a palm leaf handwritten manuscript in accordion format. Later, 
manuscripts, however, were highly expensive and fragile. They had to be handled carefully and they could not be read easily as the figure. Pages from the Diwan of Hafiz, 1824. Hafiz was a 14th century poet whose collected works are known as Diwan. Notice the beautiful calligraphy and the elaborate illustration and design. Manuscripts like this continued to be produced for the rich even after the coming of the letter press. A script was written in different styles, so manuscripts were not widely used in everyday life. Even though pre-colonial Bengal had developed an extensive network of village primary schools, students very often did not read text. They only learned to write. Teachers dictated portions of text from memory and students wrote them down. Many thus became literate without ever actually reading any kinds of text. Figure Pages from the Rig Veda. Handwritten manuscripts continued to be produced in India till much after the coming of print. These manuscripts were produced in the 18th century in the Malayalam script. Print comes to India. The printing press first came to Goa with Portuguese missionaries in the mid 16th century. Jesus Priest learned Konkani and printed several tracts. By 1674, about 50 books had been printed in the Konkani and the Kannada languages. Catholic priest printed the first Tamil book in 1579 at Cochin. And in 1713, the first Malayalam book was printed by them. By 1710, Dutch Protestant missionaries had printed 32 Tamil texts, many of them translations of older works. The English language press did not grow in India till quite late even through. The English East India Company began to import presses from the late 17th century. From 1780, James Augustus Hickey began to edit the Bengal Gazette, a weekly magazine that described itself as a commercial paper open to all, but influenced by none, so it was private English enterprise. Proud of its independence from colonial influence that began English printing in India, he kept published a lot of advertisements, including those that related to the import and sale of slaves. But he also published a lot of gossip about the company's senior officials in India. Enraged by this, Governor General Warren Hastings persecuted Hickey and encouraged the publication of officially sanctioned newspaper that could counter the flow of information that damaged the image of the colonial government. By the close of the 18th century, a number of newspapers and journals appeared in print. There were Indians, too, who began to publish Indian newspapers. The first to appear was the weekly Bengal Gazette, brought out by Gangadhar Bhattacharya, who was close to Ramahun Rai. Sorsi, as late as 1768, a William Bowles affixed a notice on a public building in Calcutta. To the public, Mr. Bowles takes this method of informing the public that the want of a printing press in this city being of a great disadvantage in business. He is going to give the best encouragement to any persons who are versed in the business of printing. Bowles, however, left for England soon after and nothing came of the promise. Seven, religious reform and public debates. 
From the early 19th century, as you know, there were intense debates around religious issues. Different groups confronted the changes happening within colonial society in different ways and offered a variety of new interpretations of the beliefs of different religions. Some criticized existence, practices, and campaigned for reform. While others countered the argument of reformers, these debates were carried out in public and in print. Printed tracts and newspapers not only spread the new ideas, but they shaped the nature of the debate. A wider public could now participate in these public discussions and express their views. New ideas emerged through these clashes of opinions. This was a time of intense controversies between social and religious reformers and the Hindu orthodoxy over matters like widow immolation, monotheism, Brahmanical priesthood and idolatry in Bengal as the debate developed. Tracts and newspaper proliferated, circulating a variety of arguments to reach a wider audience. The ideas were printed in the everyday spoken language of Ordinary people, Ramon Roy published the Sambhat Kaumodi from 1821 and the Hindu Orthodoxy commissioned the Samachar Chandrika to oppose his opinions from 1822. Two Persian newspapers were published, Jami Jahan Nama and Samsul Akbar. In the same year, a Gujarati newspaper, the Bombay Samachar, made its appearance. In North India, the ulama were deeply anxious about the collapse of Muslim dynasties. They feared that colonial rulers would encourage conversion, change the Muslim personal laws to encounter this. They used cheap lithographic presses, published Persian and Urdu translations of holy scriptures, and printed religious newspapers and tracts. The Diaban Seminary, founded in 1867, published thousands upon thousands of fatwas telling Muslim readers how to conduct themselves in their everyday lives and explaining the meanings of Islamic doctrines all through the 19th century a number of Muslim sects and seminaries appeared each with a different interpretations of faith each keen on enlarging its following and, in, and countering the influence of its opponents Urdu print helped them conduct these battles in public. New words, ulama, legal scholars of Islam and the Sharia, a body of Islamic law. Fatwa, a legal pronouncement on Islamic law usually given by a mapti, legal scholar, to clarify a shoot on which the law is uncertain. Among Hindus, who printed encouraged the reading of religious text, especially in the vernacular languages. The first printed edition of the Ram Charitmanas of Tulsidas, a 16th century text, came out from Calcutta in 1810. By the mid 19th century, the cheap lithographic editions flooded North Indian markets from the 1880s, the novel Kishore Press at Lucknow, and the Sri Venkateshwar Press in Bombay published numerous religious texts in vernaculars in their printed and portable form. This could be read easily by the faithful at any pleasant time. They could also be read out to large groups of illiterate men and women. Religious texts therefore reached a very wide circle of people, encouraging discussions, debates, and controversies within and among different religions. Print did not only stimulate the publications of conflicting opinions amongst communities, but it also connected communities and people in different parts of India. Newspaper convened news from one place to another, creating Pan-Indian identities. Source D. Why newspaper? Christian G. Trimbach Renade, inhabitant of Pune, intends to publish a newspaper in the Marathi language with a view of affording useful information on every topic of local interest. 
it will be open for free discussions on subjects of general utility scientific investigations and the speculations connected with the antiquities statistics curiosities history and geography of the country and of the decan especially the patronage and support of all interested in the diffusion of knowledge and welfare of the people is earnestly solicited earnestly solicited bombay telegraph and courier 6 january 1849 the task of the native newspapers and political associations is identical to the role of the opposition in the house of commons in parliament in england that is of critically examining government policy to suggest improvements by removing those parts that will not be to the benefit of the people and also by ensuring speedy implementation this association ought to carefully study the particular issues gather diverse relevant information on the nation as well as on what are the possible and desirable improvements and this will surely earn it considerable influence native opinion 3rd april 1870 eight new forms of publication printing created an appetite for new kinds of writing as more as more people could now read they wanted to see their own lives experiences emotions and relationships reflected in what they read the novel a literary form which had developed in europe ideally catered to this need it soon acquired distinctively indian forms and styles for readers it opened up new worlds of experience and gave and gave a vivid sense of the diversity of human lives other new literary forms also entered the world of reading lyrics short stories essays about social and political matters in different ways they reinforced the new emphasis on human life and intimate feelings about the political and social rules that shaped such things by the end of the 19th century a new visual culture was taking shape with the setting up of an increasing number of printing presses visual images could be easily reproduced in multiple copies painters like raja ravi verma produced images for mass circulation poor wood engravers who made wood blocks set up shop near the letter presses and were employed by print shops chip prints and calendars easily available in the in the bazaar could be bought even by the poor to decorate the walls of their homes or places of work these prints began shaping popular ideas about modernity and tradition religion and politics and society and culture by the 1870s caricatures and cartoons were being published in journals and newspapers commenting on social and political issues some caricatures ridiculed the educated indians fascination with western taste and clothes while others expressed the fear of social change there were imperials caricatures lampooning nationalist as well as nationalist cartoons criticizing imperial rule figure raja ritu dhaj rescuing princess madarsa from the captivity of demons print by ravi bharwa raja ravi bharma produced innumerable mythological paintings that were printed at the ravi bharma press women and print lives and feelings of women began to be written in particularly vivid and intense ways women's reading 
therefore increased enormously in middle class homes liberal husbands and fathers began educating their women folk at home and sent them to schools when women schools were set up in the cities and towns after the mid 19th century many journals began carrying writings by women and explained why women should be educated they also carried a syllabus and attached suitable reading matter which could be used for home based schooling but not all families were liberal conservative hindus believed that a literate girl would be widowed and muslims feared that educated women would be corrupted by reading urdu romances Sometimes rebel women defied such prohibit prohibitions. We know the story of girl is a conservative Muslim family of North India who secretly learned to read and write in Urdu. Her family wanted her to read only the Arabic Quran, which she did not understand. So she insisted on learning to read a language that was her own in East Bengal in the early 19th century. Rashundori Devi a young married girl in a very orthodox household learned to read in the secretary of her kitchen later she wrote her autobiography Amar Jeevan which was published in 1876 it was the first full length autobiography published in the bengali language figure the cover page of indian charivari The Indian Charivari was one of the many journals of caricature and satire published in the late 19th century. Notice that the imperial British figure is positioned right at the center. He is authority, authoritative and, and imperial, telling the natives what is to be done. The natives sit on either side of him, servile and submissive. The Indians are being shown a copy of Punch, the British journal of cartoons and satire. You can almost hear the British master say, "This is the model. Produce Indian versions of it." Indian Charivari. Album, Office Number Seven. Degrees Line, Calcutta. Same social reforms and novels had already created a great interest in women's lives and emotion. There was also an interest in what women would have to say about their own lives. From the 1860s, a few Bengali women like Kailas Bashini Devi wrote books highlighting the experience of women. about how women were imprisoned at home kept in ignorance forced to do hard domestic labor and treated unjustly by the very people they served in the 1880s in present day maharashtra tari bai sindhe and pandita ramabai wrote the passionate anger about the miserable lives of upper caste hindu women especially widows a woman in a Tamil novel expressed what reading meant to women who were so greatly confined by social regulations for various reasons my world is small more than half my life's happiness has come from books so see in 1926 begum rokeya sakhwat hosen a noted educator educationist and literary figure strongly condemned men for withholding education from women in the name of religion as she addressed the bengal women's education conference the opponents of the female education say that women will become unruly fly they call themselves muslims and yet go against the basic tenet of islam which gives women an equal right to education if men are not led astray once educated why should women while urdu tamil bengali and marathi print culture had developed early 
Hindi printing began seriously only from the 1870s. Soon, a large segment of it was devoted to the education of women. In the early 20th century, journals written for the sometimes edited by women became extremely popular. They discussed issues like women's education, widowhood, widow remarriage, and the national movement. Some of them offered households and fashion lessons to women and broad entertainment through short stories and serialized novels. In Punjab, too, a similar folk literature was widely printed from the early 20th century. Ram Chadha published the first selling first selling istri dharm vichar to teach women how to be obedient wives the khalsa tract society published chip booklets with a similar message many of these were in the form of dialogues dialogues about the qualities of a good woman in bengal an entire area in central calcutta the battala was devoted to the printing of popular books here you could buy cheap editions of religious tracts and scriptures as well as literature that was considered obscene and scandalous. By the late 19th century, a lot of these books were being profusely illustrated with woodcuts and colored lithographs. Peddlers took the Battala publications at two homes, enabling women to read them in their leisure time. Figure Ghor Koli The End of the World Colored Woodcut Late 19th Century The Artist Vision of the Destruction of Proper Family Relation Here, the husband is totally dominated by his wife, who is preached on his shoulder, he is cruel towards his mother. dragging her like an animal by the noose. Figure An Indian couple, black and white woodcut. The image shows the artist's fear that the cultural impact of the West has turned the family upside down. Notice that the man is playing the veena while the woman is smoking a hookah. The move towards women's education in the late 19th century created anxiety about the breakdown of traditional family roles. Figure A European couple sitting on chairs. Nineteenth century woodcut. The picture suggests traditional family roles. The Sahib holds a liquor bottle in his hand while the Mem Sahib plays the violin. Print and the poor people activity. Look at figures 19, 20 and 21 carefully. What comment are the artists making on the social changes taking place in society? What changes in society were taking place to provoke this reaction? Do you agree with the artist view? Comment this. Very cheap small book were brought to markets in 19th century, Madras towns and sold at crossroads allowing poor people traveling to markets to buy them. Public libraries were set up from the early, from the early 20th century, expanding the access to books. These libraries were located mostly in cities and towns and at times in prosperous villages for rich local patrons setting up a library was a way of acquiring prestige from the late 19th century issues of caste dis discrimination began to be written about in many printed tracts and essays 
Jyotiba Phule, the Maratha pioneer of low caste protest movements, wrote about the injustice of the caste system in his Gulamgiri, 1871. In the 20th century, B. R. Ambedkar in Maharashtra and E. V. Ramashyami Naikar in Madras, better known as Barrier, wrote powerfully on caste and their writings were read by people all over India. Local protest movements and sect also created a lot of popular journals and tracts criticizing ancient scriptures and envisioning a new and just future. Figure Lakshminath Bajbro, 1868 to 1938. He was a doyen of modern Assamese literature. Buri Ayar Sadhu, Grandma's Tale, is among his notable works. He penned the popular song of Asham, O Mor Apunar Desh, O My Beloved Land. Workers and factories were too overworked and lacked the education to write much about their experiences. But Kashi Baba, a Kanpur mill worker, wrote and published Chote Aur Bade Ka Sawal in 1938 to show the links between caste and class exploitation. The poems of another Kanpur mill workers who wrote under the name of Sudarshan Chakra between 1935 and 1955 were brought together and published in a collection called Sachi. Kavitayan. By the 1930s, Bangalore cotton mill workers set up libraries to educate themselves following the example of Bombay workers. These were sponsored by social reformers who tried to restrict excessive drinking among them, to bring literacy and sometimes to propagate the message of nationalism. Nine, print and censorship. Before 1798, the colonial state under the East India Company was no, not too concerned with censorship. Strangely, its early measure to control printed matter were directed against Englishmen in India, who were critical of company misrule and hated the actions of particular company officers. The company was worried that such criticisms might be used by its critics in England to attack its trade monopoly in India. Box 4. Sometimes the government found it hard to find candidates for editorship of loyalist papers when Sanders Editors of the statesman that had been founded in 1877 was approached. He asked rudely how much he would be paid for suffering the loss of freedom and the friend of India refused a government subsidy, fearing that this would force it to be obedient to government commands. By the 1820s, the Calcutta Supreme Court passed certain regulations to control press freedom and the company began encouraging publication of newspapers that would celebrate British rule. In 1835, faced with urgent petitions by editors of English and vernacular newspapers, Governor General Benting agreed to revise press laws. Thomas Macleod, a liberal colonial official, had formulated new rules that restored the earlier freedoms. Box 5. The power of the printed word is most often seen in the way governments seek to regulate and suppress print. The colonial government kept continuous track of all books and newspapers published in India and passed numerous laws to control the press. During the First World War, under the defense of Indian rules, 22 newspapers had to furnish securities. Of this, 18 shut down rather than comply with government orders. 
the sedition committee report under rowlett in 1919 further strengthened controls that led to imposition of penalties on various newspapers at the outbreak of the second world war the defense of india act was passed allowing censoring of reports of war related topics all reports about the quit india movement came under its purview in august 1942 and 90 newspapers were suppressed after the revolt of 1857 the attitude to freedom of the press changed Enerst Englishmen demanded a clampdown on the native press. A vernacular newspaper became assertively nationalist. The colonial government began debating measures of stringent control. In 1878, the Vernacular Press Act was passed. Modeled on the Irish press laws, it provided the government with extensive rights to censor reports and editorials in the vernacular press. From now on, the government kept regular track of the vernacular newspapers published in different provinces. When a report was just as seditious, the newspaper was warned, and if the warning was ignored, the press was liable to be seized and the printing machinery confiscated. Despite regressive measure, nationalist newspaper grew in numbers in all parts of India. They reported on colonial misrule and encouraged nationalist, nationalist activities. Attempts to total nationalist criticism provoked militant protest. This is turn led to a renewed cycle of persecution and protest. When Punjab revolutionaries were deported in 1907, Bal Gangadhar Tilak wrote with great sympathy about them in his Kashari. This led to his imprisonment in 1908, provoking in turn widespread protest all over India. So Gandhi said in 1922, liberty of speech, liberty of the press, freedom of association. The government of India is now seeking to crush the three powerful vehicles of expressing and cultivating public opinion. The fight for Swaraj, for Khilafat, means a fight for this threatened freedom before all else. Write in brief. Discuss. Project. Do this and comment this.